Deadlines, deadlines. They rule our lives as journalists, and none more so than Arash Masoodi, the M&A correspondent of the Financial Times. And today is a deadline day in a very big deal that Arash has been writing about, which is the SAB Miller takeover by AB InBev. But it feels a bit like an anticlimax. Well, Jonathan, on Tuesday, one day ahead of a UK deadline, Anheuser-Busch was able to get a deal in principle with SAB Miller, its UK target. That deal, the third largest of all time, we thought was going to come down until 5 p.m. this afternoon. But in a sort of frantic flurry of meetings through the weekend and on Monday principally in London, the two sides were able to come to an agreement on a price that worked both for Jan Duplessis, the chairman of SAB Miller, and Carlos Brito, the chief executive of AB InBev. Okay, and these are interesting big personalities. Carlos Brito, hard-headed Brazilian boss, very ambitious. Jan Duplessis, wily South African chairman. Do you think that this deadline helped or hindered either of them? Well, I think in both cases it helped crystallize that something needed to happen on Monday. The risk was when this lit, the fourth offer from Anheuser-Busch InBev came in at 43.50, which they disclosed on Monday. The risk was if they did not move fast enough, uh, and get some sort of agreed outcome that night, they would have sp had to spend the next two days principally in public trying to drum up shareholder interest to get pressure exerted on SAB Miller to engage. And we'd seen uh, earlier bids that were made privately at £38 and £40 in cash. There was also a share element. It seems to me that Jan Duplessis played quite a clever game here. Would you agree? Yes, it seems to be a tactic now in big, big high-profile UK takeovers that you just delay, delay, delay and keep drawing the, the, the bidder to the table and getting them to raise the price. We've seen this now in a couple high-profile takeovers, AbbVie's takeover of Shire, which ultimately collapsed, and Pfizer's attempts at AstraZeneca, which well, also failed. Indeed, that's the big one, isn't it, that everybody thinks about, was Pfizer, AstraZeneca. They got very close to the deadline. It all fell apart somewhat on technicalities, but there was a sense that perhaps this new timetable which had come out of Kraft's takeover of Cadbury in 2011 wasn't actually very helpful. What do you think the consensus is now about the way that takeovers are run in the City of London? It's something that people are discussing consistently, and there's not a real consensus, um, but the general view is that on the, on the whole, the panel, the takeover panel which guides UK takeovers, has created something that has fundamentally shaped and change the narrative of UK takeovers. And it can catch targets, bidders off guard, as we saw with Ian Reid at Pfizer, who stumbled. Carlos Brito stumbled slightly on Wednesday with some of the language he used. Again, with seven days to go, he came out in a very public way to sort of put pressure on SAB Miller to engage. That said, it seemed like the deadline and the sort of knowledge that if they did not get some sort of agreed outcome by 5 PM today, that there would be six months of no engagement and a complete lockout for AB InBev on, on, unless certain conditions were were met. And how about the advisors? It seems to me that they're getting used to the system, it's bedding in for them. Who were, the, who were the personalities in this case? Well, so on the defensive side, helping Jan Duplessis were the London-based boutique Roby Warshaw, which is Simon Roby and Simon Warshaw, and they've actually been in a couple of these scenarios, including on AstraZeneca's defense. For uh, ABI and, and Hazard InBev, you had Lazard, uh, the investment bank which was led by you know, several of its key advisors. And there's also another important personality we haven't mentioned, which is Alejandro Santo Domingo. What was his role in all this? Well, Alejandro Santo Domingo represents his family's holding in SAB Miller, a key 14% stake that effectively made him the kingmaker when he did not come out in favor of the 42-15 offer that Carlos Brito was discussing last week. And Alejandro all of a sudden became the swing vote because whichever party was able to win him over ultimately got the deal in their favor. Uh, it seems at the weekend there were some very important meetings in New York with some of, some of the Brazilian clan that have been behind some of these big takeovers in the consumer industry and Alejandro. That network knows each other very well. And it seems like both sides were basically trying to, to keep Alejandro in their camp. Ultimately, he was sitting next to Jan Duplessis in those final meetings. Thanks, Arash. Well, how it seems to me is that this is a system that is bedding in. People are getting used to it. There'll still be debate about whether the deadline is too short at 28 days. Need a bit more time maybe for political reaction. But the punchline for me is that you need smart tacticians on both sides to make it work. And in a sense, there, nothing has really changed.